News First, face to face with Shalom Benedict. Hello there, very good evening. Welcome back to another edition of Face to Face where we strive to keep you abreast of the current um, political unfoldings that are taking place in Sri Lanka. Of course, there is a lot happening. Uh, this is, as I always remember, uh, remind you, an election year. And uh, today this was certified even by the presidential, uh, president's media division that put out a statement and said that the presidential election will be held in due course. And the president's media statement uh, went on to note that the elections or the general election will be held thereafter probably uh, during the period of next year. But the presidential elections are coming this year for sure. So much is happening in Sri Lanka's political arena. To discuss these matters and much more, uh, we've got with us uh, here today parliamentarian Patli Champikaranavaka from the United Republic Front. A very good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Mr. Ranavaka. To, to start off, now there are many opposition parties, many segments. There are formerly groups in the government that have now broken away and are calling themselves independent. Yeah. Uh, at times, though, they vote in line uh, with the government or with the government's uh, perceived agenda. Now, in the middle of all of this, where do you stand? Uh, you were previously in uh, the Hello Rumea. Yeah. Now you have created the United uh, Republic Front. So where do you stand in this mess, if I may call it <laughs> loosely? Actually, I'm an independent MP there in the parliament, mm. but uh, I'm sitting there in the opposition bench mm. because uh, these government policies, uh, I think, are not going to solve our problem. Mm. After the bankruptcy declared in uh, 2022, mm. we need new political and also economic agenda to salvage this country from this economic crisis and social crisis. Mm. So that's why we form uh, uh, this uh, uh, United uh, Republic Front. Mm. And also we invited uh, most of the professional people mm. you know, that who can deliver mm. things to join us. And at the meantime, now we are planning to have a proper, uh, credible, alternative alliance hmm. to contest the coming elections. Hmm. Now, have you all put out any statement? How, what, what, does the, what do the people have to see about what you're planning on doing? The one thing is very clear that we need to have a kind of an implementable plan. Hmm. You know, the government is having now their own plan. Hmm. You know, that's... But uh, the people don't know about it. No, no, that the IMF, uh, you know, that uh, they had signed IMF... Oh, the agreement, the IMF the agreement. I, I, so that I, is the base of the government's plan, government is that what you're plans saying? Government plans and that uh, it, it's, uh, they are not going to implement it in, a, uh, you know, the holistic way. Hmm. Some part being ignored hmm. and some part being, uh, you know, that added uh, by the government. Hmm. Uh, for example, they are in the IMF agreement. Mm. Uh, there is a clause that uh, all all these uh, A-grade government agencies like uh, Bank of Ceylon, People's mm. Bank, mm. Ceylon Electricity Board, uh, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, yes. they should be run by the professionals, professionals, right? Mm. So government ignored that idea, and also the political henchmen are still running these uh, agencies. Mm. So uh, what and also. The government agreed uh, uh, kind of a uh, unachievable, mm -hmm. unrealistic uh, revenue targets, mm -hmm. GFN targets and mm -hmm. all these things. So I think it is right time to now uh, call for a uh, kind of a amendment to this agreement so that mm -hmm. we can have a realistic targets. Mm -hmm. right? For example, uh, uh, this uh, IMF is uh, asking us to increase our uh, revenue levels from say 8% of GDP in mm. 2021 to 15% of the GDP in 2025, mm. right? It's an unachievable thing. So mm. government is now pushing and putting up uh, taxes on taxes mm. to achieve this target and, uh, uh, and also huge electricity tariff mm. and also the fuel uh, cost and all these things. Uh, because of this, the country's economy is shrinking. Mm. Right. One side, it's the consumption is uh, the level dropping. of level of consumption is dropping because people don't have money. Don't have money, and on the other hand, the savings are less. Mm. So no investments. Mm. So this side, it is consumption is dropping, then the production is dropping, mm. thereby the economy is shrinking, mm. and on the other hand, the less income, mm. so the less savings mm. and less investment. Mm. 
Mm. So it's uh, so the country's economy is shrinking. Mm. So we have to repay our debts one day. Mm. So in order to do that, we should grow our economy, mm. right? So and, uh, the the thing is that in order to stabilize the fiscal department of the government, mm. government putting up this huge taxes on the people, mm. but at, as a result, country's economy is shrinking so that uh, we can't repay our debts. Mm. By March, we have to agree with our foreign creditors mm. how we are going to repay our foreign loans, mm. right? So after that, we have to pay. Mm. So in order to pay, we have to grow our economy mm. and also we have to grow our foreign earnings as well. No mm. such a plan, mm. right? So uh, that's why we are, we, are, we are going to have an implementable plan mm. uh, on 14th of February mm. at the uh, Lakshman Kadragama Center so that people can uh, you know, that discuss things uh, based on this uh, document. So we've seen several um, plans yes. of sorts being put out. I think the SJB put out a blueprint. Mm. Uh, the Jataka Janda Balavege also put out a blueprint and they keep on updating this blueprint and yes. having quite regular uh, launches of these updated blueprints. Now, one thing that is seen in general, of course, is the fact that people find it a bit hard to relate to this much of content, of course, this mm. and, and, and with the current um, you know, situation in the country, people are more focused about, you know, earning their daily wage yes. uh, than, you know, really attend these matters or read through these documents. So is there any plan on your part to make these plans regarding the future of Sri Lanka more accessible to the general public? Definitely. Uh, for example, our plan is more practical and pragmatic plan, hmm. not a kind of a conceptual one. Hmm. For example, we can say uh, we are based on this social market economy hmm. or socialist mar mar market economy and things hmm. like that. Hmm. And we are going to amend the constitution, abolition of the executive presidency hmm. and hmm. things like that. But we are more focusing on the government, uh, you know, that revenue. Hmm. For example, uh, we have two options hmm. uh, in the first of January, mm. right? The uncollected, mm. right, uh, government revenue mm. is around 1 trillion, mm. right? Uh, some 950 billion from the mm. IRD, another uh, 60 billion from uh, customs, mm. another 7 billion from uh, EDSL, excise department, excise department mm. right? So, uh, the, uh, so government has no plan to, you know, that uh, somehow collect these uh, taxes. And these are taxes that have already been paid by the people. For example, the excise duty yes. is, is charged from Charge, charged for, yeah, definitely. Every time uh, yeah, a the person purchases some alcohol, <laughs> yes, yes. it's already been charged. Yes, it's already been charged. But manufacturers, you know that uh, they don't pay. Uh, actually, uh, there are 23 manufacturers. Hmm. Uh, the default tax being, uh, you know, that contrib uh, attributed to the uh, five or six uh, manufacturers, manufacturers, right? There are but, there are many who pay. Yeah, many many pay, mm. right? So uh, so government should focus on how to collect these things mm. uh, before you impose other taxes to the people. Mm. For example, the recent VAT hike in mm. first of January, mm. the government aim is to collect six hundred billion rupees from this new VAT. This right? is in one year. In one year, mm. right? So it, that means 30,000 rupees from each citizen, right? Hmm. 30,000 rupees from each citizen. Hmm. So so our, our thing is that we have to focus on these defaulted taxes hmm. and we have to collect these 1 trillion defaulted taxes hmm. rather than imposing these 600 billion on the people. Hmm. Uh, that is one thing, hmm. right? On the other hand, we can see the unregulated market here in our Sri Lanka. Today mm. onwards, it was reported that the U UPI, mm. that is a Unified Payment Interface mm. uh, that has been introduced by the Indian government, mm. is now operating here, mm. right? We we have our own uh, kind of a unified uh, uh, kind of a payment system we call Lanka Pay, yes. right? But our unregulated, uncaptured market is around 50%. Mm. That means most of the transaction not being properly registered, mm. not being properly captured. Mm. So what we have to do is to have a proper electronic platform mm. to, uh, to do our transaction. Mm. That way we can capture our transactions, mm. our country's transaction. Actually 50% means if we properly 
capture our uh, transactions, hmm. you can increase government revenue by 100%. Hmm. Right? Without imposing any, any additional, taxes to, taxes. Uh, additional taxes to the poor people. Hmm. Right? Those who can pay must pay. Right? Hmm. We have only uh, 1 million tax files. I think uh, we, if we have a proper electronic platform uh, to uh, capture all these unregulated markets, hmm. uh, we can have 2 million uh, tax files very easily. Hmm. And uh, that way you can increase 100% uh, there in the revenue, now, revenue department. Uh, and at the meantime, the most, uh, you know, that uh, mad thing government is going to do is to issue a kind of a tax file to the 16 million people. Hmm. You know, the last year, 2023, hmm. the IRD was able to uh, achieve kind of a new... Uh, Record? No, no, no. New, new only 500,000 uh, new tax files. Okay, okay. That is half a million, hmm. right? In order to have 16 million tax files, hmm. they need 32 years. <laughs> right? It's impractical. So, right? so you're saying you're saying the reason why the IRD only issued five hundred thousand new files yes. was because they're only physically capable of issuing yeah, five hundred new is, files. They, they are not geared up to that level, right? Mm. So they so don't have the manpower. They they were they need manpower. They need other you know, other facilities, computers, and other facilities as mm. well. But I don't think that we we have to chase all these adult people, the sixteen million. Mm. Before that, we have to. We have to have this proper electronic uh, transaction platform so that we can capture all these, uh, you know, that transaction transactions and uh, that way we can increase our revenue. So that uh, kind of uh, practical program we are proposing, right? So along with, uh, you know, collecting revenue from the general public and, and because we are functioning as a society, as a community, we need to pay our taxes and uh, we need to contribute to the economy in Definitely. general. Um, but there was also another uh, well, a, a condition imposed by the IMF, and, and that was to increase government transparency. Now, one thing that hmm. I think everybody can agree upon is uh, that people are so reluctant to pay taxes, they don't want to pay taxes, they are willfully evading taxes, is because of the reason that they have no faith in how their tax money will be used. And, and even people who are paying their taxes hmm. properly, duly, legally, are doing so grudgingly because they can see their money being wasted. Definitely. Absolutely wasted. So, um, uh, since you've been, uh, you know, uh, part of many committees in Parliament that is uh, that are entrusted with regulating government finances, there was one proposal in this IMF that, that particularly caught my eye, and that was regarding um, making all government tenders public. Definitely. Ma uh, creating a platform where all tax concessions that have been granted to companies, individuals, any special arrangements that have been made, to all be made public. Now, how hard is it for the government to actually, do this? Actually, now the uh, uh, finance ministry actually uh, in their uh, website, mm -hmm. they publish that list. Okay. The, the, the tax 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 tax, uh, tax concessions given okay. to the okay. people and institution. For example, uh, we can see uh, uh, for the past few years mm. we granted a lot of tax concessions. Mm. Right. We are talking about the foreign direct investments here, mm. but uh, now we are repatriating mm. more foreign currency than mm. we are getting in. Okay. Right. So it's a negative impact right now. Mm -hmm. It causes uh, to the uh, balance of payment problem as well. Right. So we must uh, stop these tax concessions given to the uh, foreign companies. Foreign companies, uh, you know that uh, they are they are making money. For example, this port mm. port operation. Mm. Uh, recently, the government uh, has given two companies twenty five years uh, tax concessions. Mm. That is very unnecessary because the business is there. It's hmm. a park and pay type of a thing, hmm. right? So that way we are losing. So, but what's the government argument, as far as you know? Why, why, why do they do this? The thing is that uh, this is kind of a geopolitical thing. One side, hmm. other side, uh, it's their government, uh, you know, thinking that uh, foreign, foreign, foreign companies uh, should be encouraged to invest here in Sri Lanka because we had a difficult time. But at the meantime, these, these. Uh, kind of a businesses, they are in port, airport, these businesses actually generate in huge money. Hmm. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a kind of a, uh, kind of a uh, big businesses that can harness our economy, hmm. right? So we should not give kind of a tax concessions to these type of, they are hmm. not strategic investments, hmm. right? And also they are in the port city, we can see 
a uh, lot of uh, small type of businesses are now running mm. and also uh, kind of a uh, uh, duty free shops uh, okay. ma- malls are been now going to be operated mm. that is wrong because the whole aim of this sport city is to change our economic uh, arena mm. right uh, in order to do that uh, we have to put up actually during our time we planned four big investment one mm. is international uh, university and international school mm. that is cranbridge university mm. from england the other one is uh, the hospital mm. international hospital Uh, we are we were actually talking to the uh, singaporean uh, company hmm. the mount elizabeth hmm. to put up a hospital here and also the other one is the convention uh, hmm. building we are talking to the paris louvre and the uh, partner there in the dubai hmm. to put up a exhibition and convention hall hmm. and the more importantly the international banking center Mm. that has been actually signed with the uh, hong kong company to put up a international banking center so mm. that people can park their money mm. but now <laughs> they are having a uh, small boutiques they are in the port city mm. with some tax concession mm. right so what happened to all of those plans i i think uh, the, the, the because of the country went bankruptcy the and uh, these these things has come but unfortunately we are not going through the proper plan they are in the port city and other areas as well hmm. for example we are trying to uh, salvage uh, the indebted ceb hmm. by way of increasing the tariff hmm. right last year they earned around 60 billion as profit hmm. the this year the first month january they earned 20 billion hmm. right for example the industrial sector hmm. our tariff is highest only to second to the uh, singapore and uh, uh hong kong right right so we are not competing with singapore and hong kong we are competing with vietnam hmm. we are competing with bangladesh we are competing with thailand malaysia and, and india sri lanka's electricity prices are the, the highest in south asia yeah so we can't compete hmm. so what is the outcome our companies are relocating to vietnam hmm. relocating to bangladesh relocating hmm. to the south india sri lanka into malaysia and other countries so country's economy is shrinking right mm. on the other hand the poor people right who actually consume less than 60 units mm. right they are they are they are we call them electricity poverty mm. right so in tamil nadu is free of charge free of charge for the all the families uh, who consume uh, less than 60 mm. our thing is the highest right as a result last year over 1 million people right they are electricity things they are electricity connections connection were dis- being disconnected. disconnected right so they have to pay another 2000 uh, 2800 rupees to get electricity connection hmm. right and i think looking at the broader picture of it you really yeah. can't understand uh, the severity of the issue because yesterday i remember we carried this report on our news uh, where a father Uh, had uh, they had cut off the connection to their house because uh, they had not paid the bills mm. and the father had gone uh, to the neighboring house and attempted to uh, ah, ah. make some sort of a connection with the connection line that was in that house these are all line houses right, very right. poor people right. and uh, the father had gotten electrocuted and died on the spot oh. and the reason why he did this was because he wanted to have a light in the night for his child mm. or two children mm. to study so that's the plight Yeah, yeah of poor sri lanka yeah that's uh, on the other hand the ceb is earning huge profits hmm. right they are i think they are jacking up hmm. uh, their cost i saw the uh, uh, recent uh, figures they sent to the uh, pucs hmm. that shows uh, some some quarters they are, they are deliberately jacking up their prices and of course it is csl is, is is agreeing with you as well because they've sent a response to the ceb saying that it's an exaggeration yeah that, that last september we hmm. argued that ceb is ceb was going to uh, have kind of a profit so please don't increase tariff hmm. right but pucsl gave kind of a uh, approval to raise another 18% of uh, tariff yes. hike so it affect the whole country right hmm. so uh, by way of sell, uh, on the other hand the parliament approved 129 billion hmm. to uh, the C- they absorb 129 billion of the debt of, of debts from hmm. the ceb and and you know this uh, cpc hmm. last year the 2023 its profit is around 122 billion 
Mm. Right? At the meantime, government earned taxes from fuel sector, it is 200 billion. Altogether, it's 300 billion. It's a mm. huge amount. Right? So you can't run this country like this. You have to address these issues, especially you have to uh, somehow reduce the price of diesel and kerosene because it affect to our, uh, affected to our economy. Hmm. Right. So, uh, on the other hand, we have to reduce uh, the tariff levels there in the poor people, less than 60 uh, consumption so the level, power sector. and also the industrial sector. Hmm. Right. So, that way you can run this economy hmm. and, 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 and to ac expect kind of a growth hmm. unless these type of tariff, these type of cost, these type of uh, taxes create kind of a, uh, you know, that uh, uh, break. Hmm. huge uh, uh, break binding to our uh, economy. Hmm. Uh, so Mr. Ranavaka, of course, um, plans and proposals on how these matters should be adjusted are, are quite welcome and, and there will be um, people in the general public who would go through these plans and of course um, understand, but there would also be a lot of other people who wouldn't quite understand uh, these proposals that you're making. Uh, but um, let's speak a bit about um, the political landscape now. You said you're an independent MP in the opposition. Uh, currently, uh, by today, President's Media Division, I, I don't know for what reason, but we're now taking announcements regarding the election from the President's Media Division. Uh, but, um, well, it is what it is. Uh, and the President's Media Division has announced that the presidential election will be held in due time. That means we should have a new president or the president elected by this election by October mm. this year. So we're hot on the heels of this presidential election uh, and, and, and the race is just starting. Uh, so to begin with, uh, now we know that uh, the leader of the Samagijan Balavege, Sajid Premadasa, has thrown his name into the hat. Uh, we also know uh, that uh, the rising star or, or, or a person who wasn't considered before even uh, for a presidential election, Andrew Kumar de Sanayake, is now also a top contender and then facing heat from a lot of fronts. Um, so what's your reading about what will happen this year? Actually, uh, as per the constitution, before 17th October, uh, there shall be a new president in this country, mm -hmm. right? Before that, uh, the government can take another two decisions. Mm. One is to abolish the presidency. Mm. In order to do that, they have to bring a kind of a... Uh, constitutional amendment. Constitutional amendment to the parliament get two-third majority and the referendum plus and the referendum and at the meantime they have another alternative uh, to get another five years to the current president hmm. that also needs two-third majority and a referendum hmm. right so uh, these two options are also there they could also dissolve parliament they could also dissolve the parliament mm. and also they can hold uh, all these other elections like mm. uh, this uh, local government election and also the but that doesn't allow the president to continue to be in office yeah 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 <laughs> uh, <coughs> the thing is that uh, both parties mm. the npp mm. and sjb mm. they put forward their agenda mm. and they put forward their candidate mm. right we are not going to do that in that way mm. right we first put forward the kind of a agenda the mm. workable implementable agenda mm. for this reason that is that can be uh, that can be termed as a kind of a minimum workable agenda mm. for the country uh, to somehow salvage from this economic crisis mm. right thereafter we will have discussions with the political parties social activists, mm. uh, maybe the uh, uh, individuals, mm. professionals, mm. to form a popular, credible alliance to contest the election. Mm. Basically, we are aiming to contest the general election mm. and uh, time is ripe, uh, we can choose a proper candidate uh, to the uh, presidency as well. Mm. So there are a, a lot of, um, you know, statements being made about uh, who is in a better position uh, to achieve victory at the presidential election. Who do you think are the top contenders this time around? Uh, we don't know because it's a kind of a chaotic situation right now. Mm. Some left-in populist parties like NPP is gaining momentum mm. that we understand. Mm. But uh, we can see other countries, mm. for example, they are in Greece, right? Mm. That kind of uh, things happen, mm. right? Some Sirsa movement uh, came to power 
uh, it's a left in populist party but they they wouldn't be able to deliver things right mm. you can criticize people mm. you can uh, you, you know the people's mindset is mm. very toxic right now mm. people are, are angry we are people are angry so we can you can address this uh, angriness mm. right the discontent mm. uh, we are going to punish these people mm. uh, things like that but it may not solve the problem of the economy mm. right we need workable agenda mm. right on the other hand sjb need mm. kind of a democratic social democratic they have to transform this family centered party into a social democratic party the so you're saying that party. the sjb is a family centered party that definitely definitely so it has no democratic uh, you know that way of uh, uh, having kind of a decision so they have to transform mm. unless otherwise they don't have future mm. because the new generation is now uh, going to determine mm. the country's future mm. see this uh, what happened there in pakistan mm. the new generation the young people right decide despite the suppression despite the huge suppression mm. from the state mm. uh, you know that uh, they raise their heads again mm. right so uh, the sri lankan uh, young people are more educated mm. and also more energized mm. uh, that's how they chase away the elected president in mm. 2022 mm. that is unprecedented in, uh, unprecedented in our history mm. right so we have to learn lessons from this uh, aragale mm. and uh, we have to uh, you know that uh, take kind of uh, examples mm. from this and mm. also we have to give mm. young professionals a chance to run this country definitely thank you very much uh, parliamentarian partly champika ranavaka for joining us on our show and being so candid in your expression of views uh, thank you very much to all our viewers out there also for tuning in to another episode of face to face of course as i always remind you you will get a chance to decide sri lanka's future and it's your duty to make an informed decision it's our responsibility to keep you informed and we will continue to do just that thank you for watching take care and god bless